In the last video, we developed the logic necessary to solve the change-making problem. In this video, we'll write the MATLAB code. I have here a script with a short header. This script will be our tester file. It's good practice to write a standalone function file to solve the problem, then write a standalone script file to test your function with a variety of cases. In this type of setup, the script file is often called a driver file or main script. We won't actually be doing anything with the script here, but I wanted to show it as a precursor. We need to actually write the function in order to call it in this script, so let's open a new function file. I wrote the function definition and some comments beforehand, so I'll just paste them in for the sake of time. Here we have the function header or function definition. Note that this lines up with the function header from the prompt in the last video. There's one input and four outputs. I also have some comments explaining how to use the function and what all the variables mean. Please pause the video to read all the comments. Save the file if you haven't already. This is a standalone function file, so the file name needs to match the function's name exactly. Note that MATLAB automatically names the file for you, so don't change it. Referring to the flowchart in the last video, the first big step is to make the while loop. Remember that the flowchart is a general outline. There are actually a few small steps we need to do before we start the while loop. First, let's make a copy of the money variable. This is purely for formatting purposes only, as you'll see later on. Next, let's assign each coin's denominations. We'll be using this in the loop. We also need to initialize the four output variables. Now we can start the while loop. The condition for continuing the while loop is if we have a positive amount of money. If money becomes zero, we obviously don't need to continue making change. Going back to the flowchart, we need to decide what coin we're going to use. We check if we can use the highest valued coin first, then progress until we can only use a penny if and else if statements are perfect for this. If the current amount of money is greater or equal than Q, or 25, we increment numq. Then, subtract 25 from the current amount of money. We can use else if and else statements to repeat this logic for the three other coins. That's basically it. Notice how we're moving from quarters down to pennies because we're continually trying to find the highest valued coin. To wrap up the function, let's neatly print the results to the command window.
The fprintf command uses a percent sign followed by a letter to control what is being printed and its precision. In this case, a percent %d means to print a whole number. After we close the string, we need to put the variable to be printed. This line will print this string, but replace the percent %d with whatever value money copy has. And the slash n means to start a new line. I've included a link to the fprintf documentation in the description if you're unfamiliar. This also explains the sole purpose of money copy. As soon as the while loop terminates, money will be zero, so we need to create this dummy variable to hold the original value of money. Let's use fprintf in a similar fashion to print the number of each coin that we used. We're using the fprintf statements to individually print out the number of each coin that we used neatly to the command window. And that's it for the function. In the next video, we'll test it out.